Hey, Danny. Hey there. How you doing? Hello, Danny. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Thibaut? Doing great. Doing great. Fantastic. So uh, we're already live, but it's fine. You know, I like to make it live uh, and make it super natural. So uh, cool. you're looking great and you're looking like you're really comfy in your big, uh, big armchair. Yeah, big big leather chair. Yeah, I I, yeah. Uh, I, I decided to get comfortable. It's, it's Thanksgiving week here, so you know, take taking a load off. Last day for your work, right? Tomorrow is off, right? Um, yeah, tomorrow's technically Thanksgiving. Uh, typically, folks take you know today, tomorrow, and Friday off. Okay. Okay, perfect. Good. So I think we can get started. Um, so we have uh, we are live on uh, YouTube and also on uh, Zoom. So if people have questions, they will be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, we can already get started. So um, maybe you can start by telling us. So first, we're going to talk about uh, how to land a job in, uh, you know, in sales, in tech sales. Uh, but before we, we dive into that, can you maybe tell us a bit more about you, who you are, and uh, yeah, what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So thank, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. This is a real honor for me. Um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm Danny Leonard. I grew up in Minnetonka, Minnesota, which is the north, uh, northern part of the U.S. I, uh, I have a wife and a 14-month-old baby boy named Teddy. So it's a little bit about, about me and my background. I went to school at the University of Michigan. Professionally, what I do, uh, I have been in tech sales, the tech sales arena for the last, let's call it 10, 11 years. I got my start at a company called Groupon back in the early days. I was an employee number 75-ish, 75 to 100 in that range. Uh, and uh, all on the sales side, I was an individual contributor. I ended up leading a big team over there and then jumped out to lead a few different uh, venture back startup sales teams. And more recently, I branched off and I've started two businesses. One is called Keep Scaling. It's a business where I help seed Series A, Series B companies, uh, a little bit beyond growth stage, grow and build and productize their sales team. So think of me as a, a VP of sales in a box. And then the other one, uh, which I'm very excited about as well, is called Ramp Careers. And Ramp Careers is a training and development program. We take folks that are in college uh, or just leaving college and train them up and get them ready for their first job. Right now, we're, our, our program launched with the sales vertical. So we take uh, folks that are looking to get into sales and give them the, all the basics, cold calling, prospecting, um, you know, how to write sequences, how to act professionally in the workplace, train them up, and then put them into growth companies throughout the US. Okay, nice. Great. So the first company you were at was Groupon, right? Correct. Yeah, Groupon. Okay, okay, it was a okay. crazy, crazy story. Uh, but uh, I saw it go from around 75 employees all the way up to 15,000 in, in less than three years. Well, that's a, that's a lot of office the desk to, to kind of buy. <laughs> <It's crazy>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, th thanks for, for the intro. So um, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about, uh, I think you have the focus you have on the ranked careers and getting young graduate um, to kind of like land a job in sales. So um, it's actually something very interesting for me because um, it's kind of weird, but like uh, if my brother listens to me, he's going he's gonna to find that funny because I think he, I know he listens to the podcast, but my brother, for example, works in uh, the hospitality sector you know, and he has a really good education and it's really he like, it's doing really well. I mean, the education was going well, but it's super challenging for him to find a job right now or just to do anything because everything's closed and it's a really tough thing. And so I find tech, you know, uh, me and my fiance, we're both in tech and we can see how things are really uh, different from most, most people. So the, the thing is like, why is it so hard for a lot of people to get in tech? That's the first question I have for you. Yeah, so that's that's a good question. I would say, you know, it, it is tough because tech is such an such an industry that has that that allure for so many people. So so many people think they they really want to get into tech, but when you think about tech, uh, the way that I think about it, at least, you know, 
your interests could align with nearly anything in tech. So you have to slim down the ocean of available jobs to something that you're actually interested in. Uh, I get on many, many interviews. I probably interviewed, I don't know, between one and 5,000 salespeople in, in my time. Uh, so I get on an interview and that salesperson or, or, or want to be a salesperson uh, says something like, yeah, I'm really interested in tech broadly. That to me is a is a is a dead giveaway that they haven't really researched the company. They don't know exactly what they want, and they're just actually trying to they're just trying to break into tech at any level. So they don't really care about the specific company. So what I would say is it's difficult if you don't slim it down. So so take some time and think about what you're actually interested in. If you're interested in health, if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in finance, um, what whatever those are. Uh, those can be the arenas that you get into tech in. And you just have to focus on companies that are very specifically in uh, any one of those arenas, but, but in tech. So, you know, FinTech, there's sports tech, there's health tech. So pick something you're interested in and go, go hard on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting because tech is everywhere right now, actually. And uh, if you say, hey, I want to be in tech, as you said, it's very generic. And uh, it doesn't mean that you'll be able to... Um, you know, it's, it's so different. You can be in SaaS, can be in services. There's a lot of things that can, can be done. Um, and so what are the, the, let's say, the biggest problems graduates are facing when looking for a sales job? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Great question. So some of the, the biggest challenges are, 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 frankly, you know, when, when a sales job gets launched online, we're getting feedback from some of our corporate partners at Ramp Careers that there's about 500 applicants. So you really need to make yourself you, you need to make yourself stand out amongst the crowd. Uh, that and you know the SDR job, the sales development job, entry level uh, entry level sales jobs, they're they're tough. This is a really difficult job. I know it's a quote unquote sales job, and that for some people can come across as you know something easy uh, or there's a stigma attached to it. But this is really difficult. You're you're prospecting and you're getting rejected you know, 90, 95% of the, the, the time. So you need to wrap your mind around that's going to be the actual job. So to tackle the first, the first problem, right? The first problem of there's so many applicants, you need to make yourself stand out. So yes, get your resume ready, make sure it's written correctly, uh, all action oriented, all stuff that you've accomplished with, um, with the most impressive things at the top uh, to, you know, get your cover level, cover, cover letter ready. That's, that's the basic stuff, but, but you really need to go a, a level deeper. You need to go do research on every single company that you've, you've worked at. And I would actually apply in several different ways. I would apply directly through the website. So they have your, your resume, but I would make sure to warm up uh, the end decision maker that is going to be screening you. So whether that's a VP of sales, VP of sales development, you have the ability to look these folks up. You can find them online. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can pretty easily find their email address if you just do some uh, email permutation, right, of, of their first name, last name at the company address. Uh, and I would send them a hyper-personalized note on why you're interested in the company. Uh, and in addition to that, if you know any first connections or even second connections, I would try to network your way into the company to figure out um, who are the right folks to speak with and how you can get in front of them aside from the actual just straight applying to the website. Uh, this, this will make your road a little bit easier uh, and, and, and the interview process and the application process a little bit easier for you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, that's the thing because that, that's what, we, you know, whenever you're hiring for sales or if you're junior, this can be around SDR, BDR and doing call outreach. That's the skills you're gonna be tested on. So if you can't do a proper call outreach sequence, to the person who's hiring you, the hiring manager, the person who will be managing you, um, that's not going to really work compared because a lot of all of the people are doing, and and so I think it's it's really important that you show these skills. It's not that tough to do, and, uh, and you know you're going to be able to show that you can do account mapping, that you can, you can do can do creative outreach, uh, work with your messaging, and so I think that's uh, that's what's super important. Um, one thing also for me personally, I've been a graduate of a school called HEC Montreal, which is like in Montreal. It's kind of a bachelor. I think I did a bachelor in marketing it was a while ago. And when I remember when I arrived there the first day, the director of the program, program was saying, hey, you're going to be the leaders of tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then we were like, oh, yeah, it's amazing. I'm <laughs> going to go out and manage a team and everything. 
And, and then you realize that um, when you go out of school, you actually will go into cold calling. So um, <laughs> why do you think it's a good idea actually to go in sales? Because we were promised that we would be like the leaders of tomorrow and we end up doing hundreds of dials every day. So why do you think it's a good idea to go in there? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think, you know, I, I, I was promised the same thing. I graduated from the University of Michigan's business school, undergraduate business school program. And I'm, I'm told, you know, I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be, you know, the top of my field, top of my industry. They're very, very proud of, you know, their graduation rate with jobs. And you get into the workplace and you're like, wow, I am, I am the bottom of the totem pole. This is not what I expected. And and uh, I didn't know, I didn't know sales. I, I thought I, when I, when I heard sales, I thought, you know, there's a bunch of negative stigmas, uh, use car sales, per, use car sales person. Uh, so what I did was I found a company group on at the time that I was super passionate about. And I kind of let the rest fall into place. I knew I could sell it in quotes because I believed in it so fundamentally, but I think what I've learned and what I learned through the sales journey is you're you're always selling in your career whether you sell up to your manager to get that promotion or you're selling your company as an entrepreneur or you're selling a project right you're you're socializing a project or an initiative internally uh, or or you know at, at many times selling yourself to if you're a salesperson to a client to a prospect to more folks uh, within the organization that you sell to you you're, you're always, always selling, whether you call it that or not. Uh, and companies, frankly, whether they say they have sales teams or not, are all selling, all great founders, all great entrepreneurs, you know, the Steve Jobs of the world, Elon Musk, these are salespeople at heart. They are selling their companies aggressively. So to learn that skill right off the bat as you enter the workplace will allow you and prep you for uh, many, many challenges, many opportunities that you have in your future. It's, you know, an MBA worth of knowledge right off the bat. So I, I love, I love that I went into it. I've learned so much. And I think, you know, what I also, what I also got out of it, which I didn't realize was my, you know, I've got a little tougher skin now, you know, getting rejected, over and over and over again allows you to kind of take a different mindset to anything else. You know, it's just a, a, a challenge versus something that will shut you down now. And I, I don't know if I had that before going into sales. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's one of the biggest gifts you get is like, if you, uh, if you get through it through the first kind of like, uh, um, I mean, the thing is it, it, it changes your worldview. And for me, I found that it's been super beneficial because I mean, I've never been, uh, my parents have always been really, really good at not, you know, at like uh, not making me like more than I was. So they were not like, oh, you are a little prince or whatever. But, you know, we tend to educate our kids showing that they are so important. And one thing that I found is whenever you have a young kid who's like showing you, let's say, a, a drawing or whatever, we always say, oh, that's great. That's beautiful. But even if the drawing is shit. You know, yep. and so yep. it, it, it's good. It's it's important to do that. And but that's that the thing is when you're an adult, people are not acting like that. And so yep. uh, and so like going in sales, you learn that uh, people are not are, are just interested by themselves. Actually, they don't care about anything else than themselves. And rejection is the norm. And so whenever you go in like like that, then it, it makes things so easy, so much easier. And what I found is, for me, it brought me at such a level of control over what I could do in life. Because you, you know, whenever you can go, you know, as you say, pitch to people, like start new relationships and be able to kind of like really understand how to start conversations with people. Then you get insights, then you get like introductions, then you, you learn a lot of different things and it becomes just so much easier. So for me, it's always expecting the worst. And uh, I, I always know I go somewhere, I say, okay, it's not going to work. I mean, I, 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 you know, I know people would just most likely reject me and when they don't, it's super nice, you know? So I think it's a, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, that's that's right. And I think uh, you said what you said there was was very interesting as well. It's you know you grow you, the way you grow up. You're almost um, sheltered from from true failure, right? Like in school, you know, a lot of uh, the, the high schools over here they make it really it's really hard to flunk out, you know, unless you really just don't show up. And same with college, you know, you, there, there's outlets so you don't fail. The tests are somewhat posted online. 
Um, you've got groups, so you're lifting each other up. And, and frankly, in some business schools, they really don't even allow you to fail, right? The worst, the worst grade you can get is like a B, B minus. Um, and then you get, yeah, right. The second you get in the real world, it's like, okay, you're, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's crazy. I mean, I think it's, uh, yeah, that's definitely, I don't know if when I have kids, what's going to happen if I put them in sales or whatever, I think I'm going to set a cold calling center and just like get them to cold call at two years old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe. That's, that's... No, but it's, uh, I mean, you know, John Barrows, right? You heard about yeah, him? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So he, he did like, uh, I'm going to be in sales when I grow up, like the book with his daughter. And um, it's very interesting also because she, she's like, uh, she's good, the Kodak crusher in like selling cookies. And uh, I think it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's really cool to do that. It's good education, I would say, but yeah, it's a, it's a choice of everyone. Anyway, um, so what kind of education do you think employers are looking for when hiring junior reps? Like, is it actually important the kind of education you have? Yeah, so I subscribe to one school of thought here in that uh, I will hire anybody, regardless of education, if they went to college, if they didn't go to college, anybody who shows the ability and the desire to be in sales today and tomorrow. So they want a long career in sales. They want to move up in the sales world. They just want to learn you know, through selling. Uh, I don't think education is all that important. I think you know, characteristics and behaviors are way more important and examples of when they've demonstrated behaviors are way more important. So let me give you, you know, a few examples here. So you know, I put a, a, a big premium on somebody who's hungry or determined, you know, you could use those almost interchangeably. So whether when they've demonstrated, you know, that they persevered in the face of some obstacle in the past, uh, whether that's, you know, they got injured and they battled back through it, they went through rehab and they came out on top and they came out better, um, you know, something in school where they, they flunked their first test, it was demoralizing for them and they end up getting in a or top of the class, you know, some, something like that where they've battled in the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm less keen on judging folks on what educational background they have, because I don't think that's necessarily fair. And I don't actually think that um, education right now sets students up. Obviously, this is why we founded Ramp Careers, but sets students up to take on a sales role. Uh, education today sets you up to get this nice worldview and potentially, you know, meet a bunch of friends and be social and you know college is great for so many things but it doesn't prep you for the real world the stuff that we were talking about doesn't prep you for rejection it doesn't prep you to write cold emails or network or prospect your way into an account or learn salesforce or tools that you're going to use as a salesperson so i want to know um you know are they hungry are they determined do they love uh the vision and mission of the company that i'm representing do they want to be in sales are they motivated? Are they competitive? You know, those are the things that I want to draw out of them rather than, you know, hey, where did I go to school? How long have I been in a specific, you know, educational background? Did I, did I get a marketing degree? Did I get a finance degree? Those are less important to me. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I think it's, um, you know, like I had like an interview last week uh, with a guy named Kyle Roach, who's the director of sales development at Socio. And um he said something really interesting. He, what, he used to be a teacher and now he's, he's in sales. And, you know, historically going to school and university was going to, um, uh, to kind of listen to someone or a bunch of people who would give you their knowledge about something. And now knowledge is available for free everywhere to anyone if you have internet. And so the job of, of like, uh, uh, I mean, the job of people in university is still the same. They still say, okay, I'm a reference, an authority on something and I'm gonna share, share my knowledge. But actually, what is important now is being a facilitator and, you know, the knowledge, like you have some, but there's so much more knowledge in the collective brain you can use actually um, to kind of like transmit knowledge and skills that your job should be actually to be much better at facilitating than just like teaching stuff. And so I think um, when you go to university, you get like these things where they're going to, especially in business, they're going to tell you like stuff about management models and whatever, and it's good, it's great. But often, as you said, it's not going to, it's not going to be like super tactical and often you're going to have a worldview that is like you're better than that but you have to learn that you're not you know it's just like you're just graduating you're just starting your life and there are so many different things you need to learn and be humble with that and i think as you said like people who overcame uh, difficulties in life challenges are really great for sales because that's that's what you get every day 
And uh, often education is, uh, is not a really strong indicator of that. Yep, yep, I think that's right. I think that's right. And yeah, like you said it best right there. The, the knowledge that you could either learn in school or outside of school right now, it's all available for free if you look for it, right? There's, there's nothing really blocking you from finding how to be a great salesperson, right? On, online today, there's tons of blogs and tons of literature and, you know, uh, programs that can do this for free. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so if you have no experience, let's say you're just out of the job, I'm an SDR, I mean, I'm out of job, like, uh, out, sorry, out of the uh, college, I'm saying, okay, I want to go uh, for sales and I get two offers, one to be SDR at a big sales organization and one to be a full cycle A at like a small organization. Which one would you pick and why? That's, that's good. I, 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 can't, I can't give you a direct answer there because, uh, because I think there's good and bad of both positions and we coach a lot of folks. I've coached a lot of folks into this decision too. So I think what you should optimize for, well, first is really understand the differences between those two opportunities, right? So uh, an SDR at a big company or an SDR in an SDR machine what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of formal education on how to actually be a salesperson. You're going to have a great career path laid out for you, presumably. Um, likely, you'll have established managers up the chain uh, where you can see, you know, hey, I'm going to work for this person or I could be this person in a few years. And that's attractive to some people. Some, some, some folks actually do crave that type of uh, process and that type of stability that comes with this built out career path. And if that is you, if that's you, like you in a nutshell, um, go for it, you know, go, go join that type of company. Those are, you know, when I hear that type of career, I, I hear something like a LinkedIn or a Salesforce uh, a HubSpot, something that just has this built out. And the other side, you know, the full cycle AE potentially at a smaller company that to me is exciting for folks that are looking for an entrepreneurial experience. Potentially, it's typically at a smaller startup, I would say, those opportunities. Um, they're looking for somebody who can be a, a, a big time problem solver and may not, you know, you may not get the formal training you, you want or you need about sales and how to run a sales process and, and whatnot, but you'll learn tons and tons and tons on how to build companies, how to build process, how to, you know, potentially manage and build big teams in a shorter amount of time, uh, you definitely won't have hand-holding. Uh, typically at startups, you're thrown into the wild and are told to figure it out. And that's, that's okay too, but you should know that about yourself going into it first. Again, if you're that type of person that seeks out this type of adventure, go for it. Now, I, in my career, I made the, uh, the, the latter choice, right? The full cycle AE, a group on it. There, well, there, I don't think there was SDR, that position didn't really exist back in the day, but I jumped into a cold calling sales position at Groupon as employee number 75, and it blew up after that. But, uh, you know, that the, the company's journey is, is somewhat lucky, but I think what I did is I, I worked my, you know, worked my tail off in the early days and was rewarded for it. As the company grew, I got more responsibility simply because, you know, I was, I was trusted at that point in time. And I, I ended up managing a, a fairly large team because of that. So that, that is a path for that full cycle AE. If the company does really well and you're doing well too, you will get more responsibility where, uh, the SDR, you know, the established SDR, established company, you're definitely going to have to go up the ladder in a productive way. And that, you know, again, there's, there's no wrong answer here. It's just figure that out about yourself ahead of time before jumping into those roles. Yeah, I really like that. I think also one thing that is super important um, whenever you're joining like a, a, let's say a really well-organized, um, I mean, a, a mature sales organization is that you have someone you can identify uh, with. So often, you know, like what I found is if you're an entrepreneur, often you're able to self-identify to people. So for me, it's like crazy. Whenever I watch stuff on uh, Netflix or whatever, I just really like, I, I find myself in people, you know, and I just say, okay, I, I identify to this person. And then you kind of like um, take the traits of this person and, and use it in certain situations. So, uh, I mean, 
there's there's really interesting things for me. There's a series I really love. It's called uh, Last Chance You. Have you watched it or? Oh yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen yeah. a few of those episodes. Yeah, yeah. And I really like it. I really like the one of with Jason Brown, where the guy I don't identify with this guy, but sometimes in certain situations I'm like, oh, that's interesting what he's doing. I feel that's great, and I could use some of this in what I'm doing. And you know, when I watch stuff everywhere, just like I find little things because I'm more of an entrepreneurial person and I don't really need to have a mentor or someone like put in front of me to say, okay, that's the person I need to look up to. But some people, they need that, you know, they don't identify with people. And that's why also diversity is super important in the company, because if you have only a bunch of white guys and you're, and you're a woman from minority or whatever, that's going to be super hard to identify with someone there. So you also need to look for that. You know, is, is there anyone in leadership who you can identify with and, and you know you can you can get and, and look for this mentoring. And so I think that's also a very interesting, important uh, sorry a thing. Whenever you're joining a mature sales organization, is is there someone in a position where you want to be who you identify with? And um, that's what I, that's one tip I would give because you can join, let's say, a, a kind of a frat house sales uh, sales floor. You know yeah. that's that's you know you're gonna learn, but you're gonna feel like alienated just because of that. So it's also important to uh, to check that. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, you know, it's a side story, but the, one of the first startups I worked at uh, after Groupon, we had like, a, I don't remember the specific ratio, but it was like 15 to one male to female. And you just knew you could tell when we'd bring in a, a female candidate that they were like, oh man, you know, this, this is what it is. It just becomes increasingly harder for those companies to actually hire diversity when they've, when they've built a culture, when they've, you know, for, uh, for, for whatever reason, the ratio is so off. So, you know, companies that put a premium on that, you'll see that right away. And, and when you're interviewing, it's a good thing to look at the process, the people who's there, this is a window into the company and how they act. So, you know, we, we, you know, I, I teach and, and also at ramps, we put a premium on, you know, look at that interview process, look at, who the players are, how they treat you, the logistics, are they lined up? Do they have their stuff together? Because again, you're, you're getting that insight right away about this company and you're screening the company as well. It's not just them screening you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, it's, it's, it's also, it's, um, for me, it's, it's things I didn't understand a while ago. You know, I was like, when I started my, my um, career in sales at a, like a tech company, we were only guys and I really loved it, you know, because it was really nice and this kind of like, it was kind of an extension of the rugby club where I was going and it was amazing. And, and then I was like, I don't understand, you know, like women are welcome. And then you realize, okay, with time, what it means to be in minority and, and things like that. And once it actually happened to me in a party where if, if you're a white male, you're very rarely in minority in the, West, in the Western world. And I was in this party and it was in Berlin and there's a strong Vietnamese community in Berlin. And there was mostly Vietnamese people and I was with a friend and we we're two and say, oh, look, we're in minority. And now I can feel how it feels, you know? I feel, I feel it's, I, I don't see, you know, I feel, I feel very distant. And so I think it's, it was, it's something I, I learned it this way. And I think like to people who listen to us, I think that's what you need to think about is like, diversity is really about representation and where can you find people who are like you, who you want to just like imitate basically. That's, that's the view I have on that. Nice, nice, yeah, nice, yeah. Finding a mentor, a coach, a great manager, like identify these people early, early in your career and lock on to them, you know, you know, uh, become, um, become, become close with these folks and ask them questions, you know, especially if they're open to it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so what are the most common, let's say, self-limiting beliefs uh, you see in young graduates that are joining your program? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I see a lot of folks that straight up don't think they are good enough to be in a sales role right off the bat. And I don't know if that is specific or enough or not, but they just come in with this belief that, you know, they don't have the knowledge to be in sales, therefore they can't be in sales. And I think that is fundamentally flawed. Um, you know, we, we, certainly train them on the basics of sales and how to succeed in the workplace. But I think what they don't necessarily get is that sales is, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a combination of, 
you know, learning what you have to learn about the product, understanding the value, and then just working your tail off, like working very hard and facing rejection. And most people have these, you know, if they want it, they, most people do have this trait. You can train somebody that has the desire to be in sales, to be in sales. Um, but I think this, uh, almost, uh, this almost belief that, you know, they need something before they jump into a sales role. They need training. They need, um, uh, you know, to learn something, I think that's that's a little bit flawed. They don't ne- they don't necessarily need to learn. They need to jump in, uh, face that rejection, learn scripts. You know, do the motion, do sales motion, do prospecting, send emails that you know get hostile responses before they understand. Like, okay, this is this is what it is. It's not it's not that bad. Uh, I just didn't know exactly what it was. So I think it's it's almost like a lack of experience leads to that belief. Okay. Okay. I see. Yeah, I think you know Justin Welch also. You know this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said he, like I had him on the show, and it's really, really I appreciate this guy a lot. He says something is like everybody is winging it basically. It's like no matter who, is like we're all winging it. We have no clue what we're doing, and you know, especially in sales, like, like I even talked to uh, my neighbor who is doctor. And uh, I say, do you know what you're doing when you're, and say, no, just trying stuff. You know, I have basic like knowledge on what I have to do, but you know, sometimes you have a situation, you know, it's every situation is new. You have your background and you use whatever you can, you try and you wing it, you know? And so it's, it's really, we're all kind of winging it. Uh, there's procedures or whatever in different jobs, but we are all figuring it out and everybody's kind of like, uh, has this insecurity in them. So especially in sales, if you see someone crushing it, it's not just because they know what their stuff is just because they try also. Yep. That's, that's right. They just, you just need to, you need to get in and get the, the repetitions down before you formulate an opinion of yourself in sales. And I think it's just a little bit flipped for some folks, you know, they have this opinion of themselves or they need some information before they jump in. And I just think, you know, the best way for sales is just, just jump in and, and fail a bunch of times and you'll, you'll get it. Uh, or you'll realize really quickly, you don't like it. And, and sales isn't for everybody and that's okay too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so how do you say, can people overcome this thing where they are, um, you know, they have this self doubt and what would be a, a tactical tip you would give to them? Yeah, I would, you know, for, for self-doubt, for somebody who is doubting themselves, I think there's two pieces of advice. One, sit by every single rep that is great in your company. So do that right away and spend a day, you know, a week, whatever they're allow you to do. Sit by them and listen to every single call. Ask them every question that you have because they've definitely faced most of those questions early in their career, or even now too. Uh, learn their process, learn what makes them great. That is something that I did very early and in, in Groupon, in, Groupon uh, allowed this, which is really nice. I sat by tons of the best reps at the companies in my first you know, three months at the company and even beyond uh, and just learn their process. So learn their process and then you know, emulate it, put your own spin on it, but emulate it. And two is if you have an activity goal, If you have a specific activity goal, let's call it 50 calls a day, 60 calls a day for as long as you can until you get your bearings and you feel confident, double or triple that activity goal if it's humanly possible uh, so that you get you've been given yourself the most opportunity to fail and learn as as you possibly can. Just just do it until you're you're feeling confident until you feel like you've got the script down, you've got the process down, et cetera. Uh, the biggest, biggest mistake here is I've got this feeling of self-doubt and I'm not acting on it. I'm just kind of going through the motion. I'm hitting maybe 50 or 80% of my activity goal. And uh, I, I just don't, I just, you know, don't give myself the opportunity to, to, to really grow. So, you know, the two things is sit by, sit by the best reps, learn from them, and then just double, triple your activity goal in the early days. Okay, nice. Thanks. And so now can you tell us a bit more a bit, uh, about uh, Rem Curious, what you're doing and who is it for? And if people are interested in applying, how they can do that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate the question. Always, always uh, happy to, to, uh, to give Rem to shout out. So 
Ramped is right now, it's a sales development training program. How we do this is we put folks through an immersion course over six to eight weeks. They will learn everything they need to know about being a high performing sales, sales rep. Typically, a, they get placed into a BDR, business development rep, or an SDR, or ADR role. Uh, so you'll, it's module based. You'll learn, you know, the basics of cold calling, prospecting, um, how to sell, how to, uh, how to network both internal in, in companies and external, how to act professionally, how to find a mentor and a slew of other things. Um, once the folks uh, complete the course, we have a bunch, several corporate partners that we place uh, these folks into. So and our corporate partner list is growing, you know, daily at this point in time as jobs are opening up and et cetera. Uh, and typically they're, you know, series A, series B, sometimes series C companies, so all growth companies looking to hire one to many SDRs. And then once, you know, once you're placed, you're, you're off and running obviously with the company and we're here to support along the way. So we check in with our fellows. Uh, we call the, the folks going through the program fellows. We check in with them from time to time, we offer support in an ongoing fashion, mentorship. So if you want to come back to us and get trained up to be an AE, we offer that. You know, we, we track their careers as well. Um, the easiest, easiest way to apply is just hop on our website or shoot me or one of my co-founders a note. Uh, Danny at Ramped Careers, my co-founders Mitch and Minoj are also available. Uh, just Mitch at Ramped Careers and Minoj at Ramped Careers as well. So shoot us a note. Um, we do, you know, background check, obviously screen resumes. We have a, a short call. And then if you're, you know, hungry, ready to sell, we, we let you into the program and, and let you go. And again, it's free. The program is free. We pass the cost on to the employers. So we do not believe in charging uh, the student whatsoever. We, we think some of the models out there are pretty flawed. The cost of education right now is so high that we want to keep that as low as possible for as long as possible. Okay. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I think it's great if, if people are looking for a job in sales and uh, want to to get the you know get get some skills there. I think it's, it's really a good idea. And uh, and you basically, as you say, you have this privileged relationship with partners, so it's uh, it's a great way to place uh, new people. And so, if if people are interested in getting in touch with you, where can they find and hear more of you? Basically. Yeah. So Danny at rentcareers.com is my email. We have a podcast right now. Uh, called the How I Sell podcast. We're interviewing top sales leaders from throughout the U.S. on, on their journeys. That's a great place. We have a YouTube channel. You can reach out to us there. Um, and then, you know, uh, you, you can find me directly on LinkedIn too if you want. Any of those places are great. Totally, totally available. I'll typically respond in, you know, any, under 24 hours. Uh, and, you know, I obviously would love to hear from from anybody looking for advice or, uh, potentially a career in sales, obviously come, come our way. We're, 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 uh, we're, we're open and, and would love to chat. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Danny. So that was uh, great to have you. I'll put all the links in the episode note and uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This was a great discussion. Always, always love talking about sales. And I think you're, you know, what you're doing is, is great. I love the format and uh, I, I, I truly, truly appreciate being a part of it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye, Danny. Yeah. Bye-bye.